Yeah. Uh, correct, correct. So let, let's dive into this. Uh, I mean, this is a one and two uh, Baylor ball club. And of course, there was a lot of focus after the Texas State game. But the one game that I really have honed into is the Utah game. Baylor seemed to be in control of that. Circumstances not working out at the end of that. But just kind of just kind of break the mindset down and the thought to this point. Um, I think a lot of folks may be underscoring Baylor a little bit, but um, the, there are some pretty good signs of life right there, in my opinion. Yeah, the Utah game was encouraging. Uh, unfortunately, what preceded that and what we saw last weekend kind of brought the mood uh, down. And so Utah is is really the only balancing act right now that keeps everybody from, I think, just having no hope whatsoever. Uh, that opening game, guys, against Texas State, you give G.J. Kinney and company a lot of credit. Uh, but that was just a really bad matchup. I think it would have been for a lot yeah. of teams uh, right out of the gates. And so that one stunned them, no doubt about it. And I think because of just the expectations rolling in, it really threw a lot of people for a loop. Um, and, you know, a lot of the two was was not only just, you know, the way they lost that game, but it was also kind of how they looked throughout that. So to see them come back against Utah and have a better showing uh, was encouraging. To know that you went toe-to-toe with a, a team that's borderline top 10 right now was encouraging. Now, I will say the thing about that was, you know, they played Bryson Barnes, a quarterback, for a majority of that game. And, uh, you know, had a, a, another quarterback in Johnson come in later and have some success pretty quickly. And so you look at it and you're like, yeah, you held Utah in check. You had an opportunity to beat them. Uh, you stood toe-to-toe with them. But was that full strength Utah? No. And so if you're one of those that's just kind of not into what you've seen so far, you don't even really highlight that Utah game as a positive. But for those who are not uh, completely down uh, after that Texas State game and, and who are – uh, patient enough to know that, hey, this is a team that's just trying to make progress week to week. Yeah, that was an encouraging sign because Utah's physical. Utah's uh, going to be one of the, the most formidable teams moving forward in the new Big 12. And so uh, going toe-to-toe, I think, showed this team can compete with, uh, you know, other competitive teams. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, it also showed that they couldn't finish. And then last week, I mean, it, it, they did what they were supposed to do against the team in Long Island uh, that was nowhere near their level or most people's level. Uh, but even that was a little bit sloppy. And so there was a bright spot of competing with Utah, but overall, guys, it's been a bit underwhelming for Baylor fans and, and I would say players and coaches as well. Yeah, Craig, you've seen a little bit of the progression start to happen for the Baylor Bears here, but you got a tough hill to climb uh, this week now. Um, in in terms of the opposition, Utah, run, Utah ran the belt, runs the ball pretty well here. The Texas Longhorns are starting to run the ball, but they also play a high-tempo aerial assault offense as well here. How do you think that the Bears are going to be able to stop this, and what schemes do you think they'll be able to roll out? Uh, I don't. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, I do, though. I think everybody is, is a little bit worried about how they defend against Texas. You know, I, I know last week it was a little bit more of a struggle for Texas, and so people are probably hoping there's some, some remnants of that, although I think maybe they got that out of their system post-Alabama. So, yeah, that's the big question, guys, really is, um, you know, unfortunately for Baylor, their defense is less of a question mark than their offense. But, you know, I think that they're going to, uh, you know, be aggressive. I I think they're going to, you know, try to obviously get into the backfield as much as possible. But it's just that we've seen such little ability to do that against a team the caliber of Texas. You all got a little bit of taste of it, but the Longhorns are um, a different animal offensively, to say the least. So, you know, I think you're going to see a lot of defensive backs. I think you're going to see uh, them try to put some some pressure on the Quinn Ewers to just rattle him and, and get him a little bit off. Um, how they go about doing that, you know, that's part of the question because they haven't shown um, the ability to have a lot of guys that can get to the backfield. So uh, if they're unable to create any chaos back there, um, you know, that's going to leave their defensive backs on an island. And I will say that if there's been a bright spot defensively, it's been their cornerbacks. They had young mm-hmm. corners, but they've got a handful of those guys. And Dave Miranda would tell you that's probably the strength of their team. Now, that's been a strength so far, but have they played anybody with Xavier Worthy and Jordan Whittington and so- Jatavian Sanders and so on and so forth? No, not even close. And so, um, you know, I think they're going to be aggressive. I think they're going to, uh, you know, definitely try to, um, you know, man up as much as possible and, and try to just say, hey, you guys straight up beat us. And if you do, you do. Um, but man, it's, it's a challenge. And, and I'm, I'm just curious myself to see sort of how they how they do this defensively, because Dave Aranda, we know his pedigree. Uh, sure. But for defensive coordinator Matthew Powell, this is just game number four. And this is easily right. his biggest challenge. So I am very curious to see, um, you know, how hands on Aranda is, but uh, how they go about trying to just slow down this Texas offense as well. 
Yeah, um, it's not just a, you know, a challenge, Craig. It's a, almost a nightmare, right? If you're a defense coordinator trying to plan for this, you know, offensive, you know, potency that the Longhorns can actually possess at times, but they're very inconsistent. So they that's right. one thing that the Bears do have. And you see them force a lot. You see Ewers force a lot of things into, into cover three that don't really need to be there when the underneath is there. Do you think maybe that you see a lot of zone coming up from the Bears and maybe a lot of zone blitzes there. And then on the other side, this is a loaded question, but on the other side, we know that the offense of the Baylor Bears can be a little bit potent as well there. What's the attack scheme on the offensive side of the ball? Yeah, defensively, I mean, I do think they'll be aggressive. I, You know, to what extent, I'm unsure because – um, I just I don't know how confident they are in their ability to be aggressive and still hold up on the back end. Right. Like they like their guys in the secondary, but there is a little bit of a question mark there at safety. And we know how Texas can just blow up teams. Um, and so, you know, man, I, I don't know. That's 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 the chess match that's most fascinating to me is Sarkeesian right. versus Aranda because Palich yeah. is the defensive coordinator, but Aranda since that first game has made it let it be known they're like, yeah, I'm I'm involved. I'm involved more defensively than I am offensively. So. You know, that's that's the million dollar question to me is uh, is how they go about doing that. But certainly if there's a weakness in that Texas offense, uh, of which it's, it's kind of hard to see, but it's not skill. Obviously, it is. It is getting yours a little bit rattled. Right. It's right. trying to get him off his timing and make him force some things. And so I think however they can try and do that, that's what they're going to, to do. Um, but, to you know, the breakdown of it. Um, yeah, I think I think we'll see on Saturday as far as offensively. Um, you know, it's been a real struggle. You know, Blake Schaefer got knocked out early and Sawyer Robertson comes in and his very first game, he gets dinged up as well. And so part of what his game allowed you to do was have him run the football on occasion to keep you off of your feet. Um, unfortunately, with a bad ankle now, last week he was unable to run and it, it you could tell it had an effect on him in the passing game. And they basically yeah. just stayed yeah. – on the ground all day long. I mean, you look at the box score, I forget exactly what the numbers were, but it was like 40-something rushes to like 12 passes. And he had some passes that you just saw the ball die halfway through the air. You're like, right. what was that? And yeah. you realize afterwards, like, oh, that, that must be the ankle. Uh, I don't know how much healthier he is, but he had passes that were just, you know, they got halfway in the air and they were starting their descent uh, and, and landed several feet in front of the wide receiver. So, yeah. I mean, are they going to be able to run the ball on Texas? I have my doubts. If they can't, uh, can they throw the ball around based on what we saw last week? Absolutely not. So I'm I'm at a loss for how they're going to try and, and, you know, move the football. Um, they're going to have to try and hit some big plays, but I just don't know if they had that capability of Robertson's not able to put full strength behind his throws. Um, he's also a young guy. You know, he's not somebody who's got a lot of starts under his belt. He played sparingly at Mississippi State under Leach and then, you know, has played – uh, so far, a little bit in each of these first three games, and obviously a lot last week as the starter. But, um, yeah, man, it, it's they're not going to be able to run like they did against Long Island last week, and that's all they did, basically. They didn't do much of anything in the passing game. And like I said, what they did was not all that impressive. So I don't know how they are planning yeah. on scoring points. They're going to try to force the run, and just hopefully Robertson's a bit, sh uh, excuse me, a bit sharper than he was last week. But beyond that, um, you know, that too is, is something I'm very – curious about because it has not have been an easy road trying to score points for this offense yeah um, it, it, and that's uh, oh, i'm sorry wax i was just saying with speaking with craig smoke you can find him on twitter at craig smoke go ahead rodney no sorry and, and that's one of the things you know going into the season you know you know with uh with richard reese i mean a great freshman season last year i mean almost a thousand yards right there 14 tds and then you get the osu transfer um in you know kind of adds a different balance to that but i think a lot of uh, what a lot of folks aren't thinking about right here with with baylor having trouble running or, or maybe having trouble running the football this is a totally different offensive line, man. This is a, you had to go back in and, and this is, this is brand new. What would you have one holdover? You had one holdover and uh, then you're trying to build and then you have to face a juggernaut defense like Texas, man. This, uh, this is going to be tough with, with what Baylor's been dealt to this point. Yeah, it really <laughs> is. Uh, it's, it's puzzling. And, and the chess match will be fascinating because they are operating a bit shorthanded and you're right. This is a brand new offensive line. Last year they had the entire line back and the thought was, man, they're going to be dominant. They're going to be yeah. able to run the football at will. They're mm -hmm. going to be able to do this and do that. And it was anything but that. It was a disappointment last year. Um, and now, you know, everybody but uh, one guy, as you mentioned, Gavin Byers played a lot last year, uh, is gone. And 
uh, you know, it's been a little bit of a process. And, and you saw that last week uh, in Long Island. But, again, it was Long Island. Like, I mean, what do you take from them being able to run the football on Long Island? That's not K-State. That's not Texas. That's not, you know, even OU for that matter. Uh, that, that's not something that they're just going to be able to line the ball up and, and do that again this week. So, uh, yeah, it's been a struggle for the O-line. They're young there. Uh, they're steadily getting experience, but um, can they get down there in the dirt with those big guys from Texas, you know, those four- and five-star type caliber players, uh, those NFL-style, uh, you know, future star players? Uh, I don't know. And and that, to me, is where this is all going to be won and lost. I think they can hold up and make some plays defensively. Sure. Um, I do think they have the ability to do that, but they're going to have to have – uh, some help from their offense because we saw them kind of we've seen them stranded out there on their own before and get worn down that's what happened against Texas State that's what happened against Utah um, and you know that's that's been um, you know the part that's probably been the most difficult for them in some of these games just the lack of complimentary football saw a little bit better of that last week but yeah I mean they've got a huge challenge uh, across the board guys I mean that's the thing about this game is there's little areas here and there like I mentioned the cornerbacks but it's not like they faced the Texas receivers, you know, then, hey, they ran the ball well last week, but it wasn't like they were going up against the Texas you know, defense. And so this game is going to tell us a lot about where Baylor is, uh, where their uh, mindset and their attitude is, and just where their, their growth and their maturity is and, and how much they've, you know, been able to uh, grow through experience these first three weeks because they are a relatively young team. And I think that's sort of just where the uh, – you know, some of the disconnect has been with the fans and with the program is that I think the fans expected them to be farther along than they are. And they're much more in a, uh, uh, not a rebuild, but in a, in a build with a lot of young guys. And this will be for a lot of those guys, uh, their first, you know, mountainous task, so to right. speak. And I'm happy right. to see kind of how they are able to, uh, to manage with all that. Well, Craig, you talk about it, you know, it, it will be a mountainous task, but the one thing about Texas is that everybody gets up for Texas. So if you're the Baylor Bears, you got to like that. And, you know, coming into it, Jackson seems to be, you know, the the key component or the key target there for the aerial attack for the Baylor Bears. Um, do you have anything that you can add for his success? Or maybe if there's going to be someone that's going to have to compliment him on Saturday to plan for a better of attack for this Baylor Bears offense? Oh, we might have. I think we actually kind of lost Craig there. Yeah, I think we lost him. I think we lost him. Maybe. There. But anyways, guys, go check out. For more Baylor Bear uh, content and information, go check out Craig uh, Smoke at Craig Smoke. Let's see if he reconnects. There he is. Yeah. There we go. Hey, guys. Hey, sorry Craig, about that. that. I got the, got the spinning good. circle of death. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, it's happened plenty of times. It happens from time to time to the best of us, Craig. But anyways, um, what I was just saying there, the line right now is 15 and a half. Um, but like you were saying, it's a mountainous challenge, right? But the good thing about Baylor is that everybody usually gets up for Texas. Like, Texas is everybody's Super Bowl, man. Going into the conference play for the first week here, you got to like to take some of those emotions going into this game. And doing so, what are some of the key components that we might see from Baylor moving forward? We know that Jackson comes in here as one of the you know the key um, targets uh, from the wide receiver room. But you mentioned Drake that they Abby. run the – they yeah. run the ball very well here. We, we got a local guy on the squad, uh, Josh Cameron, as well. We know that what he can do uh, when he gets into space. But is there another uh, another key component or another key uh, type of offensive target that's going to be able to complement Jackson going into this week? Yeah, I think, um, you know, receiver-wise, that's been like kind of the, the theme with this team. That's been a work in progress. But I think you look at the tight end and Drake Dabney. He's got three touchdowns yeah. on the year. Um, you know, a big target, a guy who came back from a pretty horrific injury last year and has been in the end zone quite a bit here often. has been uh, just a nice, uh, you know, not a, not a safety net because it's not like he's consistently catching passes, but sure. he is a guy that is a little bit of that. So I think he's one of your more consistent guys. The receiving core is just very young. Um, you know, even Jackson himself comes over from Arkansas with a lot of big expectations, but he's still kind of a work in progress himself. Um, Trying to feel it out, right. Yeah, trying to feel it out. I think that's kind of the theme with with most of their wide receivers. But Josh Cameron, you know, he is a guy that they're very high on. He's shown flashes here and there. But, yeah, I'd say the, the one guy, um, you know, possibly receiving-wise that's, that's, uh, that you put in there would be a Drake Dabney, also a Hal Presley. Um, you know, was a, a guy that originally signed with Auburn, transferred to Baylor a couple of years back. And he's shown some flashes, especially down near the end zone and making uh, some tough catches. Uh, but, you know, needs to do it with more regularity. Uh, but I would say if there's anybody potentially making some big catches this weekend against Texas to help move the chains, uh, Jack, Drake Dabney 
Hal Presley, Josh Cameron. Uh, those would be some of the guys that you're, you're most likely to see. I don't really think as of right now uh, there's anybody receiver-wise that you would say, like, where did he come from? Or, wow, what a massive surprise that is. I, right. The one guy, though, that is probably not very well known, and he comes out of the backfield, uh, but the true freshman in Dawson Pendergrass, he ran mm -hmm. for 100 yards yeah. last week. It was against Long Island, sure, but he's a true freshman from East Texas, and that was his first real action. Uh, he, he, you know, he might also catch a ball or two out of the backfield, uh, depending on how things go on Saturday. But, but he's another guy that I would just say, you know, potentially could be somebody that you're like, who is that? That's the true freshman from Mineola, the running back, uh, Dawson Pendergrass. That, that's a guy that, that might be involved as well. But uh, beyond that, I think anybody else will be kind of a surprise, but, but probably a pleasant surprise for the Baylor offense at this point. Yeah, yeah Craig, no you know, anybody that's ever played the game will tell you, man, it doesn't matter what the opposition is. If you get over the century mark on the ground, you're seeing the ball or you're seeing the hole as well, and you see flow of traffic, and you're seeing your cutback lanes. And, yeah, it, Pendergrass looks like he could be a stud, no doubt. Um, Craig, that's all from me. Rodney, you got anything for Craig? Yeah, I actually do have one question for you, Craig. So uh, sure. and so being in the Austin area, and I know that we're going to have a lot of folks that check in and, and are good, or that are going to want to hear this question. Any early thoughts on the transfer, R.J. Martinez? That's a Ooh, dude yeah. that, that, that lit up the scoreboards here at Westwood High School. He made me highlight videos because I called his games. I know he was in the ball game last week. Uh, um, any early thoughts there with Martinez? I, I think that's a guy, he's multifaceted. Uh, there's always been a question about size or whatever, but I think that that's something that that, that doesn't really matter. Uh, thought, thoughts there on Martinez's future there at Baylor? Yeah, you know, thank gosh that they have him, given how quickly Blake Shapin got hurt. You know, they almost yeah. found themselves in a, a huge pickle had they not picked up R.J. Martinez. And so, yeah, he was a bit of a surprise. You know, they had a whole situation where, um, you know, they were expecting to sign a, a big prospect on signing day. He flipped the Oregon Austin Nova side on the morning of National Signing right. Day. That left them, you know, completely scrambling. Uh, They're able to go get Sawyer Robertson out of the transfer portal um, from Mississippi State. But, yeah, got R.J. Martinez as well. And I think that was, a, you know, a player not on anybody's radar that many people knew about. But the moment they saw him, they're like, okay, you know, that makes sense. Look into his background. They're like, wow, he's played a lot of football for Northern Arizona. Okay, mm -hmm. so if he gets thrown in there, that he should, you know, be far more comfortable than, you know, just your typical backup. But every uh, thing that I've heard about him so far going back to spring ball is just, you know, very professional, um, really well liked, uh, has come in and just fit in right away. And is a guy that I feel like they're confident in. And if it comes down to, hey, they need to make the call to throw RJ Martinez yeah. in there, then I think that they're comfortable in doing that. You know, do, do they believe that he can go and carry them the way? I don't know about all of that, uh, because it's just, you know, the level of, of the Big 12 is just, it, it is what it is, man. Yeah, it's, it's a yeah, difficult it's... beast. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it, it was weird though last week because, you know, I mentioned earlier with Sawyer Robertson and, and the ankle. Um, and a big part of his game so far is just the ability to run and kind of, you know, keep the defense on its heels and set up the pass. Well, with the bum ankle, he couldn't run, and he also couldn't really set up the pass all that well. And then his passes were dying halfway through the air. So yeah, you can't follow through. Yeah, you can't. You can't do anything. So um, you know that was going on, and it was very obvious. And they they pivoted to RJ for one series. It was very strange though, and we didn't really get much of an explanation. But they went to RJ for one series. Um, you know, it, it was what it was, like a couple plays and they punted or whatever. And um, that was it. And then Sawyer was right back in there. And it was very strange just because I think we were all left puzzled of like, if you put him in there, why not keep him in there for at least a couple of series? No. But they yanked him pretty quickly. Um, I'm not sure if that was um, – because like I said, we never really got the full details because we were also distracted by so many other things that went on. Um, but I, I don't know what that was. I don't know if that was just getting his feet wet so that he's, you know, he's already been in and, and – you know, it's not just baptism by fire if they have to pivot to him, you know, this weekend or next weekend right. or whatever. Um, but I was I was curious about just how quickly he was in and out. But I, I think they have confidence in him. I think that they feel like they can go and, and run an offense and score some points behind him. But, you know, obviously they'd like to have their top two guys healthy. But it's been thumbs up uh, from all indications on, on their feelings about R.J. Martinez. Good to hear He's he is Craig Smoke. You can find him on 365 Sports writing for the, or 365 Sports YT writing for that. Um, also, the host for BearCast 365 on Sikkim 365. Thank you so much for your time, Craig, and uh, hopefully we'll see you at Health Camp, huh? Yeah, hey, I, I would uh, definitely like to run into you guys there, absolutely. Uh, treats on me, but you no, know, I appreciate you reaching out and looking forward to, uh, you know, hopefully a very entertaining game this weekend. 
And, uh, you know, nice to talk with you guys. And if you need me to join you all at any other point, just let me know and I'll be happy to do it. Hey, absolutely, dude. So I, I met you three, three or four years ago when I was uh, working with Bucky and Aaron, man. And I, I heard you chop it up for Baylor Bears right there. And I found, you know, ever since then, man, you're some of the best that can do it for the Baylor Bears, dude. I appreciate your content. You're some of the best content out there for the Bears. So everybody that's out there right now listening to this show, make sure you go follow uh, Craig Smoke. Please do so. Thank you so much hey, well, for your time, brother. Yeah, man, care, man. I always appreciate joining that show and, and joining you guys now as well. And look forward to talking to you again. Uh, have a great week, guys. Appreciate you. You too, brother. Be good, good man. man.